night today and we are here at the Apollo Hotel where we are celebrating love, unity and empowerment of women. Yes, my name is Ivan Chisa and welcome to Good TV Africa. Like I said, we are here in Johannesburg and we are gathering for this prestigious event that is called the Global Woman Empowerment. And what is it all about? Well, it is not for me to explain, but I am here to ask a couple of women that are dressed up so beautifully. They are shining like stars and I want to talk to them and find out what exactly that has brought them down here so I want you guys to really stick around and just take a glass of wine and enjoy because we are actually shining and it is so much of ambiance around here so let me just look around and see who I can find <laughs> oh yeah she's looking so bright how are you darling Good afternoon. Mm, you're looking so beautiful I am just wondering what is this beautiful rose doing here uh, thank you very much. Uh, this afternoon we are attending the Global Womanhood High Coffee and I'm excited to listen to the speakers that will be here today. Before the gentlemen out there kill me, please introduce yourself and tell them what company you are actually working for or what company do you own because I so believe that the women that are gathered here, they own their own businesses, right? That's correct. Um, it's Itumeleng Mugwena and I own Zuri Decor. Um, and we sell home decor items and at the moment we are specializing in rugs for lounges and living areas. Are you really looking forward to have a good time today? Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Darling, just go and enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, as you can see, she's looking beautiful. I don't know if you want to agree with me. But then there's more coming in. There's more coming in. Let me see. Oh, the women are coming. Oh, there's another one here. <laughs> she has a phone in her hand. And she just want to give it away because she wants to talk to this angel right here. How are you, my lady? Fine and you. I am so good. What's your name and what are you doing here? Uh, my name is Morosi Madime. And I'm one of the guests. The guest I was invited. Yes. So Osmorezi, but so when I talk about the corona event, the AKA, when I talk about Kai, when I talk about the Oto, I mean, we weekend, we never celebrate the Mother's Weekend, whatever. And then when I talk about why, um, I was invited by the um, Mary. Invited me almost two weeks ago. Yes, and I decided that you know what, I'm definitely going to attend, and I'll invite my daughter. And shame. I oh, that's your daughter I just spoke with. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's my daughter. <laughs> She's so beautiful, hey? Oh, thank you. And I invited her, I think yesterday, two, or two days ago, yes. And I think when I saw the speakers and the topics, I told myself that definitely I need to attend. And yeah. you know what? I'm grateful <laughs> for being here. And you are really, I can see, I mean, you're looking so bright and shiny. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much and have a beautiful time. I hope so, hey? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we are still here at the Apollo Hotel. Women are still vlogging in. They are on their high heels. I can tell you right now, there is no one who's looking any shady. That is why I made sure that I look like a pilot so that I can fly this aircraft so high. So I can see the other one is coming. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Ladies, do you see the reason why my, my dress has the shoulders? You know, how are you, darling? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Did, did you really dream of me and you said, you know what, because Eva is coming over and she's got that dress, I'm also going to rock up my... Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Today we're celebrating queens, so we should be dressed like queens. You know, I left my hat. Why didn't you remind me? <laughs> oh, apologies. Queens always wear hats, eh? <laughs> You know what, Africans are looking at you right there and you're looking so gorgeous. Please tell them who you are and why you're here. I'm Dr. Kyobaka Sishoka. I'll be the program director for the second session. I'm here to celebrate what Global Women has done. And we are here to say, Queen, stand up. Yeah. Let's see you. I mean, who said doctors cannot look at this gorgeous? Ladies and gentlemen, think again. I'm hoping that you guys are going to have a good time. And you know what? Definitely I'm going to learn so much because this is my first time here. Yes, you're definitely going to learn a lot. I started years ago and now I've grown throughout this empowerment network. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. My lady, please go and enjoy yourself. You <laughs> All righty. Well, ladies and gents, I am here as you can see. We've got doctors. We've got, you know, dentists. We've got people that are owning their own businesses. We're also going to have the minister uh, later on. Uh, which minister, you better stick around because right now I'm just going to go and take a sip of my coffee and come back. So don't go anywhere. Welcome to the much-awaited and anticipated yes. day, the Global 
help women who
So turn me now, yeah. It's turn to you, feel the power now. But Saliva, Divisa, let me sit down, Rosa. It's turn to you, so. It's turn to you, feel the dry and dry. Salaisha, Salaisha, Mote, Massimini, Salaisha, Anna Pedro, no more. Salaisha, Mote, Massimini, Salaisha, 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 Mote, Massimini, Salaisha, all of the living. Salaisha, Mote.
Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Okay. Mother's Day. You know, to be proactive is paramount. So we decided to celebrate our motherhood today. At the same time, our girlhood. At the same time, our um, womanhood. Let me welcome each and every person in this room. You are so special. And to the empowerment network. Let me furthermore welcome the people who have loved on this afternoon from different countries. And last month, if I, call, I recall quite well, we had called, we had named the month of April the Possibility Month. If you recall well, I had said it is possible, it can be done. It has been done today. It is possible. We need to bring more thought leaders. We need to be innovative. We need to stretch ourselves beyond the norm. We need to be present. We need to push hard. We need to say, we can, I can, we shall, and we will do it. Because it is possible. Thanks to virtual engagement, thanks to technology, that we're able to stretch ourselves beyond the borders of South Africa and beyond the borders of Africa. And we are now in the global village. We have entered the global zone. A round of applause for that. <laughs> Let me just give you a snapshot of where the Empowerment Network started. The Empowerment Network started in 2014. And at that time, something inside of me was burning. Something that said, you've got to do it, you've got the muscle to do it, and you shall do it, and here I am doing it. Yes, yes, yes. I would just like to reconnect the apartment network with, um, and, and in fact, womenhood, with the studies that I embarked on. Um, it was, uh, my research was on advancement of women into the leadership and of the organization that I've been serving for quite a number of years. And that opened my eyes in terms of how many people are struggling to advance into the highest echelon of the organization. Not only the ones that I serve, but many more other organizations. But what alarmed me was the fact that when that change happened, and that research managed to contribute towards advancement of women at the highest level of that organization. They did not stay for long. And I need someone in this room to actually then say, I am going to take further to investigate. Why are women not staying at that level? Why? What is, what is making us to, to not stay there? There is something. So that requires some, some, some research. But I was pleased to, even in that organization, to have established what we call the Hoja Networking Forum for Women, which came to the mentor. And over a number of years, the principals at that time were very proud of me and what I had actually established. And that's when I realized that anything is possible if you apply your mind and say, I am going to make a, a big part of the transformation. It is possible, it can be done. But later on, where I serve as the head of school of project management, the head of school of customer services, I then take my space I then establish And little did I know that men are also aching. They are also aching in the little corners. Dr. Will Cosa, 
who basically have been attesting for some time, for a very long time, that Africa shall bring intelligence. Africa is rich, Africa is wealthy. Africa is a mother, it's a continent that cannot be moved, misshaken. Africa has got in, in talent. Africa has got people who can express themselves beyond the, the continent, but stretch themselves, and that's what we're going to be doing. We need to make sure that we position the land of our forefathers and our ancestors. We need to ensure that we, 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 we pull each other and we make sure that we support one another. I still remember Don Matera saying to me, maybe it's not on your marks, get set, ready. Don Matera said, when I had an engagement with him, he said profoundly so, I was, I was with my son, attentively listening to him, and he's got a little bit hoarse voice, and he said, on your marks, get set, ready, don't go yet. Hold your brother, hold your sister, and you move forward. <laughs> Can we stop skipping each other apart? Yeah. Can we stop pulling each other down? Yes. There's a lady in this room. Yes. I gave a talk um, a couple of um, days ago, in fact, it was last weekend, at a high tea. She's actually the founder of uh, Pull It Up Woman. Elise, please stand up.
was basically when we took the grannies from from Soweto Deep Slot, from uh, um, uh, uh, Alex Tembisa, about nine 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 um, uh, areas and by the Department of Health, and we're reporting directly to the MEC of Health there in terms of ensuring that we get involved in COVID nineteen and uh, be able to help out those frontline, the frontline staff working with all the hospitals in Houghton and the clinics as well. And we did video trips. And the video trips, it was about 14 of us. I think those who actually did the video, video trips, some of them are in here. Please could you stand up and then we applaud for you. And you know yourself. It went further and we said we are not going to close that, that down. We are going to continue with mental health engagements. We did that very really well. We continued with global prayer festivals and we attracted 21 countries in the global village. That's when the relationship started. That's when we pulled on board UK, US, uh, India, Pakistan, Jerusalem, and we had 16 countries in Africa who basically locked in every Sunday and were praying together for a number of things, for liberty, for the scientists, for the churches, for our, the children, for the schools, for everything else. And I want a round of applause for that. <laughs> it went further. We then established Africa Market. And that, then we have about 150 entrepreneurs that were empowered. I put a hold on that because it was just growing exponential. And he said, let's keep a break on this and let's try to restructure ourselves, reorganize ourselves because there is an overwhelming response every time we open the doors. The guys are eager for growth. The guys are eager for solutions. And I want to summon you guys in here. Can we all be solution providers? Can we challenge ourselves to become change catalysts? Can we challenge ourselves and become change ambassadors? Yes. Can we redefine our characters as women? Of we have brought all these children, all these people in this world. For nine months, that womb was carrying that child. And that child needs us, needs our leadership. Can we step forward and try to grab that struggling woman and that struggling man and make a difference? And I want to give you an assignment as we move forward. As we celebrate, let us not forget to celebrate ourselves. As we celebrate others, let us not forget to celebrate ourselves because we forget that we also need that support, that love, that appreciation. Let us do that. Can we have a round of applause for us? To be <laughs> I'm closing. And as we close, I want to say that we then established youth symposiums. We established men, menhood uh, symposiums under the leadership of Nadeje Gumufuke. Yes. He is here in the room with us. A lot of applause for him. Yeah. And we do have womenhood, and that's why we are here. And that's why we deserve another round of applause. And I'm going to then close off by saying that let us be mindful that the world that we live in right now is a new world, is a new norm. We need to adjust. Let us not be scared. Let us not be scared to fail. Because at times we are hesitant to try out new solutions, new initiatives, because we're thinking that we are going to be failing. Yes, failure is imminent because failure is an opportunity for you to grow. Okay. And I want you to understand that. When you fail, it's when you are growing. When you fail, it's when you are applauding yourself as a conqueror. Okay. And I want to say that to each one of us in here, this is a, a special day for us that I thought it would not be possible. I'm a dreamer. Mm. And when I dream, I act. Yes. And I've got a very strong work ethic where I been working for a very long time or saving that organization for a very long time. I'm a character of known that is known as an implementer, an executor, and my character is just that, like that. Courageous and bold. I'm going to request, I'm going to request as I, as I, as I, as I leave the floor now, I'm going to request 
Miriam, to just come and share with us. Recently we had manhood. On Thursday we had manhood and we had a number of men who were sharing with us what it is to be a woman. As much as they are men, but we need to now take our own space. And Miriam, just briefly cap on that. Have a lovely day. Enjoy yourselves. I thank you.
just say, I want mothers to pause. In other words, I want mothers to talk to their daughters. To say that the marriage does not always have to be marriage in community of property. Marriage does not always have to be marriage in community of property. In actual fact, I believe that the, as of today, there shouldn't be marriage in community of property. Yeah, am I making that? As of today, there shouldn't be any marriage in community of property because women are as capable as men, if not better. They shouldn't be there. Now, let's, let's understand this whole concept of uh, marriage in community of property, what it does. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say that uh, I used to think that uh, I'm intelligent, and then with time, I realized that uh, I don't need intelligence, I need wisdom yeah. for me to go forward. And then I had to go to my mother for wisdom. And when I talk about you know, going back to my mother for wisdom, I'm not just talking about one mother. You know, it takes, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about several mothers that I had to go back to and say, how do I navigate the situation? One of the things that I'll get into uh, briefly will be the whole question of uh, self-discovery. But let me go back to the institution of marriage. So we encourage our daughters to marry in community of property. We encourage our daughters to believe that uh, uh, they need a husband to support them. That is not how things are. Sometimes the very benefits that we think are in the marriage are actually in the opposite because we get into and why am I saying this? I'm a pragmatic person and I'm not uh, a realistic person. I'm very pragmatic. I believe in doing. Uh, I believe that uh, each and every day when I go to court and, and, and I take a particular case and, and, and I listen to the couple either divorcing or I listen to the couple in trouble because a business has failed or I listen to a couple in trouble because sequestrated or they are they are they have been declared insolvent. Mm. Every time I listen to these kind of stories, I shed a tear. Because the first thing, the first thing that you will encounter is that the people are married in community of property. And then when people are married in community of property, you know Saha Hodisa Saha Hodisa Kasana Saha. That is what it means. So now, what the uh, mothers do not understand, or what the, uh, uh, your daughters do not understand, is that uh, apart from the assets, even the debts are yours to share. And then, I just have to say this because I'm a man as well. Uh, often, when you see women in trouble, it is not because of their own doing. When you see women in trouble because of men, they are the ones who go out there. They are risky. They go out there, they, they come up with uh, big debts, you get into trouble, and then one day when the sheriff knocks on your door, he cannot distinguish between your husband and yourself. The sheriff just sees Barbara, and then the sheriff takes whatever that he wants. So the first thing that I would advise Respectable mothers today is that uh, let's encourage our daughters when they get married. Rather than them marry, uh, is there a hand? No, I talk about something. No, I'm not going to Oh, you hear me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's encourage them to marry out of community of property. And then if um, there's any other thing that they can do, they can sign an antenatal contract. Because an antenatal contract will protect them. Uh, so, what happens is that there, there are various kinds of antenatal contracts. There is the so called accrual, you can sign accrual, or you can just sign a straightforward antenatal contract. When one of you, the husband or the wife, is in trouble, the other one is for one shot of transferring the assets to the other. But we can talk about that outside this forum. <laughs> 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 because it includes a lot of.